Bismillah. The need for creed. Armageddon. Imam Mahdi and Jesus. Peace be upon them both. Since the caliphate was dismantled in 1924, colonialist divide-and-conquer subversion has torn Muslim unity apart and in self-inflicted humiliation, nationalistic pride, greed and abandoning religion and true jihad has played its part. Western pundits always mock the lands of the Muslims as being backwards and corrupt, yet this is utter hypocrisy, for they have replaced Allah Sharia and Khalifa, killed for wealth and installed puppets in the name of democracy. The war on terror is a gloss for the real reason Western troops are being embedded in lands like Afghanistan, for elite powers are paving the way for the Antichrist Dajjal and preparing for opposition expected in Khorasan. Just as Herod ordered the murder of countless babies in a bid to kill Jesus, peace be upon him, as a child, they will never succeed, for Allah will send al-Mahdi as a herald before Jesus returns to rule the entire world, but truth they will not heed. How will you be when the Son of Mary descends upon you and your Imam is from among you, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said? But which group among the 73 sects of Islam was he referring to who will be blessed by Imam Mahdi at its head? Muhammad, peace be upon him, foretold that caliphate upon the methodology of the prophets would last for 30 years after he died. The period from Abu Bakr to Al-Hasan, peace be upon them both, lasted exactly 30 years before dynasties took over, for he never lied. He, peace be upon him, predicted that after the Khulifa al-Rashidin, or rightly guided caliphate, kings would become hereditary lords, followed by the spread of tyrannical regimes until removal. Then, the rightly guided caliphate would again be restored. The Prophet, peace be upon him, once held his grandson, Al-Hasan, peace be upon him, aloft, saying he was a Sayyid who'd reconcile two opposing sides. As foretold, to avoid bloodshed, Al-Hasan allowed Muawiyah, peace be upon them both, to become the Caliph while he humbly stepped aside. For piously giving up leadership, Allah will raise up Imam Mahdi in the last days directly from Al-Hasan's bloodline, a leader the whole Muslim world will unite behind, for he will reverse oppression and injustice during his blessed time. Even if one day remained on earth, Allah would prolong it so that Imam Mahdi could remove its injustices and harm, and a sign might be the sun literally rising from the west, whose occurrence will not benefit those without Iman. The Prophet, peace be upon him, predicted Islam diminishing back to Mecca and Medina. Without a caliphate, we are in that time. It is also said that inviolable Jerusalem was not included, but the tyrants occupying it will account for their crimes. When the world is full of injustice and evil, Allah will send a pious man from Fatima's, peace be upon his blood, to reverse the trend. His name will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah and will be given the faculties to become caliph overnight as Allah intends. Before the Mahdi arrives, three princes, or sons of a Khalifa, will fight but fail to retrieve the treasures of the Kaaba. Allah knows best if it's Abbasid gold or the last ark's relics, but there'll be chaos in the Hajj season and Dhul Qa'dah. To stop the turmoil, people will force a reluctant Muhammad ibn Abdullah from Medina to make himself be known. Being few in number, means and arms, they will accompany him to seek refuge in the Kaaba, being an inviolable zone. He'll have a broad forehead and a long thin nose and be an ordinary Hijazi Salafi before Al-Mahdi rules the nation. Interestingly, the Prophet peace be upon him advised us to reach him even if we have to crawl over ice, foretelling future migration. An army will be sent from Syria to destroy him, but the earth will collapse and swallow all the troops except a few. This event will happen in al Baida on the road between Medina and Mecca and send out a defining signal too. The army sent to fight al-Mahdi will have Muslims who hate to be part of it, forced to join by the corrupt who rule. They will be raised according to their intentions, yet anyone who chooses his country instead of the Khilafah is a fool. Then, from Khorasan, Afghani borders from Kashmir to Kazakhstan, an eastern army carrying black flags will appear, made up of courageous al-Harithi Muslims who will rally to support al-Mahdi upon Salafi guidance pious and clear. It's not the Taliban who are ignorant Diobandis who bow to graves, tax heroin and fight for Pashtun pride and land and neither the Shia for Qurayshi al-Sharafs from Medina are Salafi to whom the Shia will never pledge their hand. 
Muslim success lies in purification of worship and following the Salafi way with authentic hadith too often neglected. For Jesus will rule the world with what we have in our hands, so unless we turn to our deen we'll always be rejected. As an advice for Shia waiting for their mythical Imam al-Askari to appear in Isfahan's Jamkaran or Samara's cave, Ayatollahs have misled you for centuries. So when you see these signs, please join the Ahlul Sunnah and be brave. In fact, many descriptions of the Shia Mahdi match the Sunni descriptions of Ad-Dajjal, the Antichrist imposter. And towards the end of Imam Mahdi's rule, the Dajjal will be supported by Jews in Persian shawls in his army roster. Meanwhile, to prevent the Khorasani's entry, a Qurayshi Arab army from Kalb will gather to crush al-Mahdi's call, but the Khorasanis will defeat them when denied rights and will march to pledge allegiance to a leader fit for all. They'll go to Mecca and give Bayah pledge to Imam Mahdi between the Black Stone and Prophet Ibrahim's station and the Mahdi's army will march on to plant their flags in Iliya or Jerusalem to re-establish the Caliphate in elation. The best Iraqis and Syria's Abdal or substitutes will join Imam Mahdi who speak as Jesus peace be upon him did in Syriac Aramaic. For Imam Mahdi will caretake the Muslim Ummah until Jesus takes over and kills at the Jal the Antichrist fake. Medina will become deserted as many Muslims will flock to aid the Mahdi and Jerusalem will flourish after the war. Imam Mahdi will distribute loads of wealth by handfuls until, in piety, the believers will not accept charity anymore. During this era, many Europeans will convert to Islam and seek refuge with the Muslims against a Roman onslaught. But al-Mahdi's army will defend them as brothers, defeat the Romans and victory over Rome will even be sought. A Muslim and Roman alliance would defeat a third army, with the Muslim camp based in Syria's al Ghuta initially, but when a Roman is killed for claiming the cross-caused victory, it will ignite one of the biggest battles in history. The pious will rally to Imam Mahdi, including Mawali, who may include former Shia who accepted Salafiyah as true. As for stubborn Rafida, who claim they love the Ahlul Bayt, they will abandon him, as they did to Imam Hussein, peace be upon him too. In this decisive battle, a third of the Muslim army will run away and never be forgiven, while a third as martyrs will die. The remaining third along with Imam Mahdi will succeed and they will be blessed by victories and rains from the sky. At Halab or Aleppo, Muslims will defeat 960,000 Romans in Al Malhama or Armageddon after losses on both sides. But following this, 70,000 will conquer Constantinople by just chanting Dhikr as its walls will crumble and open wide. Al Mahdi's reign will be full of goodness, crops will be plentiful, wealth abundant, and war free victories will ensue. The righteous caliphate will show the world the blessings of Islam, and those once averse will willingly convert too. Imam Mahdi's rule will cause the Arabian Peninsula to turn green with lush rivers as it once had, and food aplenty. But three years of famine will proceed at the Dajjal as the rains cease, and the Dajjal fills bellies but drains faith empty. For the Dajjal will appear with mountains of food and water and spread tribulations during 40 stretched days of harm. By then, Al-Mahdi will have retaken Istanbul, yet recall to Syria to defend families against the Dajjal by a false alarm. Al-Mahdi's army will fortify itself in the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, while the Dajjal's army has its gates surrounded. But all will look skywards as Jesus, peace be upon him, descends to earth on the wings of two angels, leaving the onlookers astounded. The Adhan for Fajr or Dawn prayer will have been called and Imam Mahdi will request Jesus to lead the congregation but he will decline saying, No, some of you are leaders of others as an honor from Allah for this Ummah or nation. After Fajr, Jesus will take over the Muslim command and ask for the gates to be opened to end the Jal's tribulation. The Jal will realize his game is up and flee towards Jerusalem but be killed by Jesus as salt dissolves in annihilation. Jesus himself will be accepted by the whole world as an Imam and judge and Islam will be beautifully vindicated for prior worldly oppression and injustice was instigated by Zionist brainwashing which led to Islam being hated. After al-Mahdi's seven to nine year rule, he'll sadly die soon after. And according to a tabi tabi'in, living to 60 years at most, Muslims will grieve the loss of the Prophet's descendant.
peace be upon them. And Jesus, peace be upon him, will pray Janazah for his righteous Salafi host. <laughs>